We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Glendale, Arizona, as we get to visit with Jeff Bowen, who is the head coach of the Arizona Christian Firestorm, heading into his ninth season as the head coach. Although, Coach, I know you've been there since the very beginning of the program. Last season, uh, a little bit of a different turn there. Two and eight overall, one and ten or one and seven, excuse me, in the Frontier Conference. New to the Frontier Conference. I'd love to hear your take on 2023 and bring us up to speed to where we are now. Well, for as a program, it wasn't very good. I mean, uh, two and eight is two and eight. You spin it however you want it, and you can talk about the whys and all that kind of stuff, but two and eight is two and eight. Um, the Frontier Conference has uh, outstanding programs, outstanding talent, well coached. Uh, there was that aspect. Uh, we were coming in from the Sooner Conference. We had graduated uh, a bunch of players um, off a playoff team, a couple All-Americans. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we also had, um, you know, we had four surgeries before we hit game two on starters on defense. So it it just kind of snowballed. Um, I'd never done that in my, uh, my career. Uh, that, that was a first in 36 years. So did not enjoy it, but uh, we learned a lot. And uh, actually, I love playing in the conference. I love the competitiveness of it. I love the quality of the of the football that's played within the conference, the history within the conference. So um, we 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 did what we did, and we we learned from it, and and uh, it changed a lot of things that we did in the spring and our approach to spring and summer and how we build our team to compete in this conference. So we're excited to get this uh, next year started and see how it goes. Coach, I, I want to stay with the Frontier just for a, a little bit longer because uh, as someone who, as you mentioned, you know, more, well more than 30 years experience in that, specifically with uh, ACU, uh, heading into your 11th season there, you you know, over time, you have a book on each team and each program. And, and I realize some adjustments are made from season to season when new head coaches come in. And obviously, you have to make the adjustments for that. You had to write a whole new book over the course of the entirety of 2023. And so, and of course, the travel was a little bit different there as well, being where you are in Arizona and where the bulk of the, the Frontier Conference was last season. Uh, tell us a little bit about that experience. Well, every day was a new day. You know, we're, we had 10 teams on our, our schedule. We had only seen two of them before. Uh, the conference, we had never played, and, and the travel, you know, was different. And this year, it's, it's the same thing because now we, we flipped home and away. So we have, uh, Four on, our, on the road trips, we've we've played at Fort Lewis, uh, our non-league game, but uh, our our other four league games, we've never been to those places. So again, there's newness this year too. Um, so yeah, there was a, there was a lot to put in it together. Um, it was like starting over. It was like year one again. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, uh, the coaching staff did a great job of of working through that and stuff. Um, we had a lot of success in a lot of areas within our football program on and off the field. It just didn't show in the record. I understand. Well, we look ahead to 24 then, and let's do that right now. One name that uh, is, is now officially a name in the past, Tyler Duncan. I know that he had uh, a lot of good years and a lot of time there. So I'd like to start with the offense, Johnny Herrera, who – uh, was a part of just, I think, every single game last season and looks like he's one of the candidates to try to take over that starting spot at quarterback. Tell us a little bit about your offense. Uh, Johnny, Johnny's the, the guy coming out of camp, out of spring uh, spring ball. He did a, a nice job. He got one start last year, um, and obviously it didn't go well, but um, he did a nice job this spring really settling into a role. Uh, understanding how we're going to run the offense and, and what we're going to do with it, but um, as we know, the jobs the jobs wide open when you when you graduate a, a five year starter. But um, you know, if you if we had to, if we were starting a game today, Johnny would probably be under center because he's got the well he's got the most experience of the guys that we uh, that we have around. But we're still excited about that room. Um, you know, Glenn, uh, Glenn Rice is back. He played some last year. Um, the nice pickup, he just got cleared from his uh, his uh, ACL surgeries and stuff last year. It was a, a, it was a young man named Corbin Vasili who's been in our program, and uh, he's, he's an extremely talented young man. It's just a matter of how he can get up to speed. 
And then we signed the the number one all-purpose quarterback in the state of Arizona um, in, in Bo Devins out of Canyon View High School here in the Valley. And uh, he's going to be in the mix. He's a 6'5", strong-armed kid who can run around, uh, put up huge numbers in high school. And that was a really nice pickup for us. And, and then um, we just signed a, another young man, uh, University of South Dakota, Jack Clarity. Um, and, and so there's five of the guys right there that um, are going to fight for the job. We'll see who gets the keys to the car. It's quite a room, Coach. You had definitely we a lot of well, we had a lot of we had a lot of building to do. So, um, like I said, two and eight didn't set well with us. So we had a lot of work to do, bringing in talent, and because uh, uh, the Frontier is extremely talented conference, and and we have to get our uh, our young men up to that level so we can compete. Coach, who, whoever gets the keys to that car is going to have uh, some some what what's a good word. I don't want to say construction, some disruption, hopefully, in front of him. I always like to preview the offensive line. Tell us a little bit about your offensive line and, and how much experience is coming back. Well, that that's one thing nice. They're, uh, they're all back except our center. Um, and even the backup center uh, played quite a bit last year. Um, left tackle, Blas Gian. Uh The left guard is Will Chambers. The right guard, uh, Matt Cullop. Uh, then we got uh, Spencer Cox at the right tackle, and then our tight end, uh, Nate Pele Tukamoa, too, is back. So uh, we feel good about the returners. They had a really good spring. Uh, and then there's some other returners that are in the mix there with the McGlenn brothers, and, and they've done a nice job. And then we signed a really good group. Uh, it's probably our, our best signing class we've had up front, and we knew we had to um, – Put some resources into building the offensive line to be able to compete in this this conference and uh so we got a couple transfer guys um a, a d2 transfer uh Vili, uh Fetipai, uh out of minot and then a, another young man uh out of mesa college in california and then four uh four high school kids that we think have potential to get in the mix, two from Arizona and then a young man from Texas and another one from California. So we really beefed up the uh, the uh, offensive line. It was a priority for us in our recruiting, and, um, and we've signed um, 11 offensive linemen, and we think we got six that, that are, are, ready, are ready to compete now to get on the field. Uh, I always enjoy hearing about that, and I guess to, to take the analogy just a little bit farther, if, if they uh, – the car in that backfield is a sports car. You want to have some Peterbilts up front. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> and, it, and it sounds like that you're heading that direction. As we're visiting now with Coach Jeff Bowen, the head football coach for the Arizona Christian Firestorm here on Midwest Sportsnet. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. And I would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to the channel here. As, as uh, I'm not sure, again, what it does for the algorithm, but it is important to building our channel. So please do subscribe. Last season's leading tackler and underclassman coach, Cameron Tibbetts, who had 90 tackles for your team, a forced fumble as well. Tell us a little bit about the defense. It'll look a little different this year too. Um, yeah, I mean, we have the eight guys, uh, eight starters coming back on offense. Well, we got seven starters coming back on offense plus another two guys that uh, had surgery by week two and they're back and cleared. So um, we're excited about that side of the ball. Um, Cameron returns as our leading tackler. And then the other, the other two uh, leading guys were uh, Griffin Meyer at corner and, and Jackson Ortiz at a safety. We, we want to, uh, we want to get back to the way we used to be. I don't, I don't want my corners and safeties uh, being in our top three tacklers. So um, we, we, again, we got quite a few guys coming back uh, and they're going to have to fight their tails off to hold, hold their jobs because we, uh, we signed some guys that can come in and compete right in, right away, and that was really our focus: is is bringing in guys that are going to be able to compete and uh, let, raise our level of play. So uh, defense is, um, you know, we, we got to get people off the field, we, you know, um, and that's that's the bottom line. There was, again, the conference was tough, uh, but we had we had opportunities against uh, Western, against uh, Tech, where if if you know we get a get them off the field on their last drive, our offense gets the ball, and maybe we have a, we have a shot to win the game. So um, we're, we're definitely conscious of that, and uh, the returners uh, have worked real hard to, uh, 
to just to build themselves physically. And um, here's the beauty for us. And I'll, I'll make it real simple. We've been to the circus. We've seen the clowns. We know what we're, we're up against. And I think our, our returners know that. And we had a phenomenal off season uh, in spring and stuff because they know we have to play, practice, compete at a different level uh, in the Frontier Conference. Coach, I always appreciate the analogies. I, I I enjoy visiting with you anyway. You're it's a it's a pleasure to get to visit with you. But I I come away with uh, I'm thinking about things a little bit different. Uh, special teams, and I think it's interesting. There you, you have uh, Abiel Lepe coming back, uh, uh, who did well for you last season. Uh, 25 of 26 extra points, four or five field goals attempts. You also have coming back from two years ago now a name that most big people who uh, follow uh, not only Arizona Christian, but NAI football special teams. Nestor Rodriguez coming back from an injury the previous season. Tell us a little bit about special teams. Yeah, we're excited. The thicker kicker is back on the field for us. Um, I tell you, we're, uh, Nestor's worked extremely hard. His story, I mean, you can, from the time he stepped on campus seven years ago, <laughs> uh, you, you, could, you, could, you could have a movie about this young man. He's come a long way. He's obviously a phenomenal kicker. He handled the uh, the notoriety that came a couple of years ago when he won the conference on a kick, and because because of his size, you know, because of the way he looks and, and those type of things, and he handled it like a champ, and and he he went viral, and it was kind of cool, you know, and uh, but then he suffered a setback and in, in, in the spring uh, tore a ligament in his knee in the weight room, and so he missed all of last year, but he worked his tail off to after surgery to rehab and. And uh, here's the beauty of this is he's going to walk out of here. Uh, I mean, it's his job. It's his job to lose. Lepe knows that. Lepe is also a punter for us. Um, it's, it's Nestor's job to lose. He's a two-time All-American. Uh, but he's going to walk out of here with a master's degree also. So that's pretty cool. Absolutely fantastic, Coach. Those, those are the stories that you hear. And I really do. Hope along the way, although I'm sure that uh, a dramatic script is not one that would be good for your blood pressure, but still that uh, if there's a, if a movie in there and a script in there somewhere, I hope that Nestor has <laughs> a nice script for him to be able to uh, to work with this season, which, by the way, gets underway a little bit later, September 14th, uh, as uh, that'll be the first time that we get a chance to see the firestorm on the field this year. And the, both of the first two games on the road, you traveled to Fort Lewis, you mentioned them, which, by the way, with your Frontier Conference schedule, the Fort Lewis trip is only seven and a half hours away by bus. So, uh, wow, that's, a, I guess, a short trip comparatively. Then you go with the Frontier Conference foe and MSU Northern on the road there, finally back at home to take on Carroll. So tell us a little bit about the start of your season. Again, midway through the month of September. It's kind of crazy. It's just the way things fall when we came into the conference, and and we knew that. And, um, you know, I'm not big on zero-week games, and I'm definitely not big on playing 11-game schedules. So just that's the way the schedule fell. Uh, yeah, it starts out tough. You know, we, we got the we got the bus trip to, to Fort Lewis, but we're used to the bus trips uh, from playing in the Sooner Conference. And like I told you before, seven hours is a short trip for us. That's – a couple movies and and a nap and we wake up and we're there. Uh, but then the second week, um, the MSU Northern game, that's the toughest travel in, in the Frontier Conference. I mean, you almost got to get a passport because you're right. You're <laughs> practically in Canada. Um, so that's obviously a tough trip. And then and then, and then we come home and and uh, you got Carol Carol um, at the end of September. <laughs> Uh, for your first home game. So it's kind of a crazy start to the year for us. So, uh, um, you know, we, we, we get the guys ready and and uh, see what happens. You know, it, it is what it is. All right. We look forward to following the firestorm this year, Coach, and we will do that. We'll, uh, we'll bide our time, though, and be very patient and uh, I'm sure talk about a whole lot of other NAI football before we start talking about you all again midway through the month of September, but you should be rested and ready to go and look forward to a new season, the second season in the Frontier Conference now for Arizona Christian. Coach Jeff Bowen, thank you so much, sir, for taking time with us today to preview ACU, and, and again, like I said, we will follow you all this year. Well, Joey, I appreciate what you do. I appreciate the coverage, and um, and uh, we're excited about the, the Frontier, like as I've said several times, and uh, it's a great conference to be in, if the best, if not one of the top 
two in the country, I think. Um, but it's uh, phenomenal, and I appreciate your uh, your coverage and of the conference in NAIA football.